Barnett, a beacon for education, leadership, and change. Education is a foundation for leadership that empowers change, and Marinette has some history with all three. For thousands of years, this place at the mouth of the river has been one of opportunity. A Menominee creation story tells that with a bright light, the great underground white bear with a copper tail emerged from the earth at Minicani near the mouth of the river and assumed human form. Yet, this place was deep in the unknown to the rest of the world until French explorer Jean Nicolet landed in the region. Since we've been small children, we've been trying to understand and discover the world around us in a similar way. To the constant annoyance of older family members, uh, small children are endowed with an effervescent sense of curiosity, always daring to ask, why? Why is the sky blue, the stars many, and must I go to bed at 8 o'clock? All too soon, though, children grow up, and it becomes too difficult and too unconventional to ask, why? It's easier to memorize, easier to not bother, easier to view education as an obstacle, but it's far less interesting or rewarding. Education is about exploration. It's about asking questions, hard work, and being open to different possibilities. And one of the most important questions is what we don't know, we don't know. As a high school student, a university student, and throughout our lives, there are frontiers of knowledge of which we're often not aware. Language is a perfect example. Now, according to the CIA World Factbook, only 7% of the world are English speakers. That number only increases to about a quarter when English as a second language is added. Now, there's a lot happening out there in the other three quarters of the world that the average monolingual speaker doesn't even know exists. It's a veritable open secret garden. At Marinette, I studied both French and Spanish for four years, and at Wisconsin, I've continued with French, leading to a minor in international engineering. Throughout my courses, the French House, and other events in Madison, I've been constantly amazed at what's out there. I've met people from Europe to Asia. I've researched engineering challenges in the developing world. I've been to France twice, and next spring I plan to study there. Now, simply reading the news in a foreign language grants a newfound perspective on world events. But even if that doesn't sound interesting, there's still a world of literature, the arts, and film. Perhaps most important, though, is the people you'll meet from near and far. We shall not cease from exploration, and at the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and to truly know the place for the first time. T.S. Eliot. You may think you know this place and yourselves, but you're always discovering what lies just over the horizon. Now, when I first arrived at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, the connection between education and exploration would have already been fairly obvious, even without the 2.3 million square feet of lab space or the 8.5 million items in the library collections. Science and mathematics had always been about innovation for me, since I began to study algebra in middle school, I glimpsed how science mathematics can make an impact and solve worldwide challenges. Prior to my arrival at Wisconsin, I had no idea what industrial and systems engineering was. I was going to be a chemical engineer. But with an open mind, I began to study both chemistry and physics and ultimately decided, well, I liked physics better. I also enjoyed economics. Therefore, I decided to study industrial and systems engineering. Now, engineers in general solve problems. They look for creative new ways to make companies, governments, and the world work better. The reputation is that engineers try and quantify everything. But the reality of the situation is that you won't be a very good engineer if you don't understand the social, political, legal, and historical context of the problem. Now, for a brief period, I had the opportunity to work on a reforestation project for Haiti. Over the years, Haiti went from being 60% forest to now 2% due to deforestation for fuel and agriculture. The grass that we selected would grow easily, was native, and would retain soil erosion. However, the history of the plant was such that for several years, Haitian farmers had been encouraged to grow this plant instead of subsistence farming crops, playing a part in causing a famine. 
Suffice to say, without an understanding of the society, the project would have failed had another substitute not been chosen. Now, whether you're interested in science or the arts, find something you enjoy and explore it. That curiosity, that wonder and drive to discover is within each of us. What you're learning now and what you'll learn in the future actually does have practical applications, I promise. And it's the foundation for leadership now and in the future. Since the early days of Marinette, many lumbermen, doctors, lawyers, educators, and industrialists have seen their fortunes rise and fall in this city. Those who remember, like Ike Stevenson, Harvey Higley, and the namesake of this auditorium, W.J. Jones, all had one thing in common. People rise to the mantle of leadership, not for the personal success they amass, but for their dedication to the community's success. Leadership. It's a convenient buzzword, but what does it really mean? I've seen many people try to define it. Most have fallen flat, but I'll go ahead and throw my hat in the ring and give it a try. Now, what I've come to believe is that there are many things associated with leadership, but leadership itself is basically one word, integrity. Because without integrity, the system's broken, and there can be no further progress. First, there's keeping a personal integrity to yourself. Integrity is what you do and what you fail to do when no one is looking. Now, most of the time, that shouldn't be very difficult. But it's the few times where it is very difficult that count. It means not always following what's easy or popular or agreeing with your friends. But if you don't have personal integrity in your own life, how can you purport to lead anyone else? Leadership means protecting the public trust, whether that's corporate leadership, civic leadership, or student leadership. A congressman for whom I campaigned always made a point of emphasizing that voters should remember who worked for them and not anyone else. As student leaders, the public trusts you to make fair, unbiased decisions in their best interest. Preserving that trust must be paramount. It means making the right decisions for the right reasons, not because you have something to gain by the outcome. If you can't describe why you're seeking a position and why you're the right person for the job and what you'd like to do there, seriously reconsider your candidacy. Leadership means when you have a seat at the table, sometimes behind, behind closed doors, remember those that, that do not. Now, Vice President Hubert Humphrey said, the moral test of a government is how that government treats those who are in the dawn of life, the children, those who are in the twilight of life, the elderly, and those who are in the shadows of life, the sick, the needy, and the handicapped. You can disagree with the role of government in that citation, but the point is withstanding. As a student leader, remember the people who are the outcasts and disadvantaged. Remember those who are not involved or socially connected. They're not the prom queens or the valedictorians. Never forget, you represent these people as much as anybody. Make it your mission to be their voice. Put aside differences and reach out. After all, you never know who you might meet. Leadership means that you're not competing for newspaper ink. And it's always nice if you get the headlines for doing something good, but ultimately, what's more important is the opportunity to do good. Working behind the scenes can have great results, and what happens publicly is important, but ultimately, only marginal. A national political party chair always used to say, people like to believe that they were born in a log cabin they built themselves. But it isn't so. Always remember to thank everyone who helped you along the way, especially your teachers and your parents. When working in a group, share the fruits of successes and take responsibility for failures. Leadership also means that you have an obligation to get the data before you make decisions. This is why education is so important. One learns how to learn. Do your homework and begin by researching and gathering all the facts on everything that you do. Solving a problem, after all, begins with data, not by guessing. Answers take hard work and don't appear out of thin air. This is especially pertinent to me when I was a student representative for the Administrative Excellence Project. You don't write purchasing policy for a campus community of 60,000 without getting your facts straight. 
The extracurricular activities you participate in here at your various schools and the post-secondary world are probably the best thing you can do now in order to cultivate and understand leadership. Although it might seem like these activities are sometimes insignificant, anecdotally, they are a laboratory fit for an MBA. Here I participated in student senate, drama, and choir. And these activities can be some of the best memories from high school. And for me, I'm sure they'll be at Wisconsin as well. Now we turn to change. Marinette certainly changed quite a bit since the names of the lumbermen, Stevenson, Carney, Ingalls. But the most important name in that change is actually yours. What will you do to write your legacy, the legacy of our city, our state, and the world? Leadership empowers people. People empower change. Leadership empowers you to make change. From presidents and Fortune 500 companies to students and communities, change starts with just one person making a critical difference. Often I believe young people, and especially students, don't understand how powerful they really are. One person can make a difference, and using systems engineering, I can prove it to you. Imagine you have a block of Swiss cheese sliced in infinitely thin pieces. Success means not slipping through the holes from one end of the cheese to the other. Well, falling into a hole represents the possibility for accident or failure. Now, there might be some latent failures aged into your piece of cheese, problems inherent to the larger environment. But at each slice, one person's initiative is all it takes to change direction and avoid a hole. One person is the difference between breaking the failure chain and slipping through all the holes to disaster. And this is actually a real human factors model. It's called percolation theory. In 1969, a lightning strike on Apollo 12 caused a complete electrical failure during launch. No one in the spacecraft or mission control knew what to do. Everyone expected young engineer and flight controller John Aaron to call for a dangerous abort maneuver. Instead, his response was, try SCE to AUX. A what? What is that? Single condition electronics to auxiliary. It was an obscure switch he read about a year earlier that wasn't designed for this situation, but it worked. All the data reappeared. And due to the actions of one person, a disastrous hole in the uh, Swiss cheese was prevented. Apollo 12 went on to land on the moon without a problem. Now, However, unlike Chester A. Arthur's description of the presidency, change requires more than simply preventing bad things from happening, of course. Your ultimate measure of success must be in state changing the status quo. Now, perhaps reminding you to think, pick things up. Your parents have often told you to look, leave a room looking cleaner than how you found it. The same must apply. Everywhere you go, you must leave that place in a state better than how you found it. After all, what kind of future do you want to live in? Now, neither change nor leadership comes with an instruction manual. You must write your own story. You must stand back from an issue and take the long view. For change requires an understanding of history because we cannot educate the leaders of the future by instilling in them the mistakes of the past. History in the past can not only color the background of the landscape, but can often draw a path in the foreground towards the future. What will be the effects of your decisions? Six months, one year, 10 years, and for future generations? These are the questions you must ask. In medieval Europe, kingdoms were unstable. They sometimes evolved and sometimes devolved. Coalitions were not held together by the power of the robe, the parliament, but instead by the power of the sword the monarch's iron fist. After all, you reap what you sow, and if you expect the public to behave like a proletariat mob, a revolutionary rabble is exactly what you're going to get. People, after all, live up to your expectations. Change is hard. Change takes time. For change is a delicate dance between inertia and passion on the floors of history. As the world does its worst, you must do your best. 
we the people had a very different meaning in 1787 than it does today, or even in 1848, when the majority of the country could not vote. Change is a story of two steps forward and one step back. Civil rights, economic security, technological advances. Change does not come to those who say, we, we maybe can't do this or we can't do that. But change comes to those who have the courage to take the stage and make it happen. Change is a musical score that wasn't written in a day, a week, or even a year. But through perseverance, slowly and surely, its meter was tamped out. The dance of change is not for one alone. It's an orchestra of many instruments playing together. Together is the sound of everyone pitching in, everyone playing their part, no matter how large or small, melodic or harmonic. Change is. We are all in this together. A conductor must bring out the best in people and trust in them in order for them to have trust in you. Conduct prudently for all the parts of the chance to do their best, and the piece will be an encore. Finally, you're the composer. You have your own symphony yet to write. All the world is your stage. Education will be the base clef, the root foundation of the chord in your exploration. Leadership with integrity falling to the major part is built upon the base of the chord. Atop them all, you set to your tune a cadenza of change. The pianissimos caress the delicacy of your decisions. The crescendo rises to the forte of your potential. Opening night is upon us. The curtain calls now. This instant, the orchestra awaits your cue to give that confident nod forward to go boldly into the first act of the future. <laughs>